welcome to uh, the, the video we're going to do today on the value of knowing what you are feeding. Uh, this is a second part of the hay testing video we did earlier. And um, just to introduce myself, I'm Katie Wirt. I'm the Grant County Extension Agent in Ag and Natural Resources. And in the hay testing video, we did a fun little game with the Price is Right and talked about what it costs not to test your hay. We focus mostly on the assumption that a producer might overfeed grain and add an unnecessary expense to his operation. So the other part of that is um, not feeding enough or not feeding the right nutrients that your animals need. So today I'm going to um, ask Kidder County agent Penny Nestor and um, Livestock Extension Specialist Barb Rummer about um, the costs associated with not feeding enough or the quality of or the quality of feed that your animal needs. So let's go to Penny Nestor first with Kidder County Extension. Penny, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Penny Nestor and I'm the NDSU Extension Agent in Kidder County um, for Agriculture and Natural Resources. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about nutrient requirements of uh, the beef cow. Okay, Penny, what are um, the baseline nutrient requirements of a mature cow? Well, that's a great question, Katie, and it has um, a couple different issues that you have to figure out before you have, can answer it. Uh, the first is uh, the nutrient requirements are going to depend on uh, a little bit about based on that specific animal in general. First off, uh, what age that animal is, um, the months since that animal is calved, her mature body weight and her peak milk production. Uh, those are just the baselines based on the animal. There's also baselines based on the environment that you're feeding that animal in. Uh, temperature, wind speed, hair coat thickness, moisture, and mud in the pen are just some examples of environmental conditions that are going to change your nutrient requirements. So um, for most of us in this part of the region, our, our animals probably average about 1,400 uh, pounds uh, body weight uh, with about a 30 pound uh, peak milk, produ milk production. So for that, our baseline energy requirements for those cows are really going to peak at uh, peak milk production, that 30 pounds of milk, um, and then uh, they're going to really go down a lot uh, at weaning time and vary and start to increase as uh, that calf or that fetus is going to be developed in that cow. For your baseline cow requirements, uh, you have three different stages of production. The first stage is your maintenance stage and your early lactation stage. Your crude protein at that time should be about 6% of your dry matter. Uh, that equates to about 1.63 pounds of crude protein per head per day um, per animal. Uh, for your energy requirements or your total digestible nutrients of dry matter, that equates to about 45% and you'll, that will come out to about 12.24 pounds uh, per head per day. Your dry matter intake, you can expect that cow is going to intake about 27.2 pounds. The next stage of production is going to be your uh, last one third of gestation where your fetus is being developed. Uh, that cow's crude protein requirements are going to increase at that point in time to about 8.8% crude protein required or about 2.45 pounds per head per day. Your energy is also going to increase with about 56.6% TDN, uh, which equates to about 15.62 pounds per head per day. And then your dry matter intake is going to pretty much take, stay the same because uh, that fetus is taking up some capacity in that animal and it's going to uh, stay at about 27.6 pounds of dry matter per day. The last stage of um, your nutrient requirement stage is going to be your milk production stage. So that's right after that animal calves. Uh, so your requirements do go up at that point in time too and your requirements actually peak at that point in time. So your milk uh, crude protein requirements are going to be about 11.7% crude protein, which equates to about 3.92 pounds per head per day. Your energy is going to increase as well um, to 62.2% of total digestible nutrients, and then uh, that will 
become about 20.7 pounds per head per day. And then your dry matter intake is going to increase as well to about 33.3 pounds per head per day. Thanks, Penny. That's very interesting. Um, in the beginning, you mentioned that um, climate or environmental factors also affect the baseline requirements. What can you tell me about how our climate affects the nutrient requirements of a cow that w when we're feeding this winter? So with our environment, we um, have some extremely cold temperatures in the winter. And with those extremely cold temperatures, we're going to have to feed more energy gen dense feeds to equate for uh, that energy lost in maintaining uh, body heat. So one rule of thumb that we try to recommend to producers is to increase your total digestible energy at least one pound for every five degrees below zero degrees Fahrenheit. So when we are looking at temperatures that are dipping below um, in those negative numbers, we do want to start increasing our feed intake and increasing um, more feed with uh, higher energy values. So that means that we are going to be feeding um, probably uh, more denser uh, hay, so alfalfa hay instead of grass hay, and potentially feeding uh, more grain in that diet. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that while those uh, animals are in the extreme cold, their intake can actually increase. So usually our intake for an uh, average size cow is about 2.5% of their body weight. Uh, in extremely cold conditions, that can increase to up to 3.5% body weight uh, for those animals. So those animals are going to need to eat more um, and eat a higher quality feed to stay warm in the winter. The other thing that you don't want to forget is uh, you don't want to forget about waste. Usually animals will waste more in the winter uh, just because uh, they like to use that waste as, uh, for bedding as well. And it's also good to supply bedding um, during those cold, cold temperatures. Well, thank you, Penny. I really appreciate your input on the um, nutrient requirements of our mature cattle. Um, I also have a few questions about body condition scoring. I know FARA has done a lot of body condition scoring on livestock. Um, so maybe, Farah, would you want to introduce yourself? I sure can, and thanks for having me as part of this, Katie. I'm Farah Brummer. I'm the NBSU Area Extension Specialist uh, in Livestock Systems, and I'm based out of the Central Grasslands Research Extension Center um, here just north of Streeter, North Dakota. Thanks, Farah. Um, so could you tell me, is there any evidence of reduced conception rates with low body condition scores? Yeah, there sure is, um, Katie, and, and so we do have research that shows that really the, the best inception rates that we, that we can hope for are going to be at body condition score 5 for mature cows, and for heifers we want them a little heavier, but the body condition score 5 for mature cows, and that is uh, something that has been documented. So. When we look at breeding cows that are in lower body condition score, is it possible for her to conceive? Sure, but you're not setting her up with the optimum rate for success. So it's really quite a lot of um, energy that's required to get her up and um, productive. And so if we try to scamp and uh, try to breed her at body condition score or maybe we're going to get a calf, maybe we're not. There's no guarantees that we're going to get a calf at body condition score 5, but the chances are a lot higher. Okay, um, thank you, Farah. The, you know, the ultimate cost of not supplying enough feed or the correct nutrients in our feed is losing body condition score and reducing um, conception rates. So, um, you know, in, on the other side of things, could you talk about the cost in dollars for producers to increase a body condition score from, say, a 4 to a 5, where they might have the best setup? Sure. Yeah, it gets expensive, you know, once we start trying to feed up, especially in the dead of winter. Um, but to start with, I'll talk about some numbers that, that I just ran here, and this is current prices, so we're looking at the fall of 2015 here when I give these prices. This is looking to upgrade a mature cow from a four to a five in a 60-day window, so about two months, pretty pretty moderate increase. Um, we look at 
a 1,200-pound cow and then a 1,500-pound cow. It's kind of the parameters for um, what we might be working with here. And we looked in terms of corn addition, that the second row, which describes corn costs there on the slide in front of you, and then drop down to dry distiller grain cost, and then the last row there, which is alfalfa hay cost. And you'll see that in today's markets, they're all pretty comparable. For that 60-day window per cow, it's going to cost you um, for your for your 1,200 pound cow, approximately $15 a head. And for your larger cow, your 1,500 pound cow, it's gonna cost you about $18, 17 to $19 a head. That is not including yardage, so that is not including the delivery cost of for that feed every day. With alfalfa, you'll save on that cost because you can feed every third day. But in general, it's going to cost you one way or another to upgrade that cow. Now, that's in a perfect case scenario. We know from, the, from what Penny talked about that winters here are very cold. And so those costs are actually going to go up because we are dealing with very cold. We're dealing with wind. And so her energy requirements subsequently also go up relative to the weather. And so you can expect to be paying up to three times the cost, if not more, of what I've shown on this slide here. Again, it's going to vary on the environmental conditions, such as whether it's wet or not, what the wind chill is, and it's also going to vary on the type of windbreak and shelter belt that you might have available. The bottom line is it's expensive. Can you upgrade a cow in the middle of winter to from a four to a five? Yes, you can, but it will cost you. Well, thank you, Farah and Penny, for helping to summarize for me what the baseline nutrient requirements of our cattle are and the, the proper body condition scoring and how to increase that and what that costs. Um, you know, ultimately, I hope this will help you realize that hay testing is a cheap investment in properly managing your livestock and that not knowing the quality of your feed could cost you in more ways than just one. You know. Like I said, again, in the first video, we talked about overfeeding. Here, it's more about underfeeding or not feeding the right quality of hay. Um, so we hope this will take producers to the next step to test their hay and um, take that cheap investment and, and make it real. Again, this is Katie Wirt um, with the Grant County Extension Service. And um, if you have any questions, you know, Farah, Penny, and I would be happy to help you out.